Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I got a little crick in my neck. Yeah, I heard you were uh, moving some furniture yesterday, huh? Oh, dude. Last three days, I got I cut my hand on something at the dump, and I had a full spiral meltdown that I was gonna die. You uh, you what'd you cut yourself on? Dude, it's a mystery. I don't know. I was throwing. I had a. I was helping my mother-in-law, like unload three, like hoarder rooms into like part of it went to a storage unit that we got part of it went to the dump and then the other part was uh donated yeah and so a whole day was just lifting all this furniture out of the house pretty much and then putting it back in and clearing everything out what what was in the uh the hoarder rooms it's just like a bunch of stuff was it just junk some of it was papers a lot of it's like old like like 10 old lamps you know and like you know just like things that they've uh, she's had forever that a couple of dogs and cats that yeah, have been yeah. just died from like, like 15 little, years ago little rats do you have you ever seen that show uh, hoarders yeah dude i can't watch that shit it's it, wild it gives me uh <laughs> it gives me some anxiety man but yeah. i i have seen it yeah i'll help they'll actually find like dead animals oh dude yeah or like they just start <laughs> shitting in buckets like eventually it's so wild it, they're, they're just like a, it gets to a point where you have so much shit that you're just like I'm just gonna shit in a bucket. Yeah, and it's okay. But uh, she's not quite there yet. We <laughs> I like to say <laughs> yeah. it's not. It's nowhere near that. She's not like really a hoarder. She just like has so many things. Like she's gotten over the years. Like just weird desks, and yeah. she loves going to like Goodwill and getting that kind of stuff. And so, but you'd see little hints of it because we'd be like, hey, can we throw away this like nightstand or whatever? It's been sitting in this back room for like 15 years. She's like, no, I don't know. Like, oh, but what if I like want to use it for something? You're like, no, you're not going to use it. You haven't used it in like 15 years. Yeah. And she's like, but it's like a nice one. And we're like, there's a sticker from when you got it at Goodwill. It's five dollars. <laughs> like, let's, <laughs> let's get rid of this one. We can donate it and make somebody else happy. So, but we were doing that. First day was just moving all that stuff, and then the second day was like rearranging the house and like getting furniture that she wanted to keep into the right areas, and then. Yesterday was just like... So did you do that for the whole weekend pretty much? Yeah, it was Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then yesterday I was like building furniture. That's nice you helped out with that though, man. That's cool. Yeah, man. You know, you got to you gotta do some things to make people happy sometimes. Sometimes you got to do stuff for the fam. That's yeah, good you did you that. help out. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I was like, I had a long week of weird... Like I got like sick for a couple of days and then I had to miss going to dinner with the Chavez family, which I was yeah. bummed about. And then I did all this over the weekend and I like fucked my neck and back up and then uh i had to miss our good friend aunt's uh baby shower yesterday yeah shout yeah out, so shout out to aunt. aunt was uh one of andy's closest friends of like all time yeah f- yeah dude um yeah unfortunately you and tanner weren't able to make it yesterday but went over to derek's new house uh <laughs> derek was andy's best friend uh, Derek just got a new house in Phoenix and he hosted Anthony Ventrano's baby shower there. Yeah. And so Marie and Anthony, you know, we had, they had all of our, all of our friends were over there. So it was really fun. I saw like a lot of our friends I haven't seen in a minute. And, um, dude, a really it was fun group big, of people. To it, was, <laughs> it was such a dude. There was a lot of people there, bro. I think there was like close to 200 people at his house. Oh, really? I'm dramatic and, and I like tend to like, over exaggerate things maybe there's 150 there's okay. definitely over 100 people i can promise you that that's a lot there's a lot of people there um derek's new house is beautiful and um yeah the chavez, have the snacks? chavez family showed up dude there were snacks everywhere there really? were cookies i like that uh, okay. all of our friends were pouring modelos into uh baby bottles and playing flip cup and like a bunch of drinking games out back there were like baby dolls everywhere and people were you know drinking out of that's ba- out do you think that he always has that many baby dolls at his house or is it like for the special occasion? I think he might just always have them over at his house. I think so too. Dude, so th- when I was growing up, uh, there's this guy that lived like five doors down from me and he was like um, very autistic, I think is the word. And he would like take care of his mother and he would, uh, he was just like, really like always doing really weird shit like in the middle of the night he would start spraying off like the asphalt in front of his house and he would like just dig dirt in his backyard like all day i remember this yeah we had no idea what's going on and like then there was these like baby dolls that would be up above his window that (laughs) were just sitting there dude and there's no babies there and he was him 
and his mother and sometimes like we me and my brother would be outside skating he'd come up and talk to us and he like i remember one time he just like wouldn't stop talking we're like all right like cool nice to talk to you because he's like an adult and we're young fucking kids just sitting outside and he goes he's like all right well gotta go feed my mom and he like lifts up a bag and it was just a gallon of milk and like 30 snickers bars (laughs) and i was like oh my god what the fuck is going on and then um (laughs) I oh, know he was only three doors down because he was neighbors with our next door neighbor. And so there was a point where the our next door neighbor started calling the cops on him like all the time. We we're like, what's going on? And so he was digging nonstop in his backyard and we we're asking him like what it's for. And he started saying he was building a mini putt golf so, course so he could have all the kids over at his house in the neighborhood. And we're like, that's fucking sus. <laughs> and then <laughs> he... Uh, but in order, like, he would only dig in the middle of the night, like, overnight. And then he would play, like, Nazi marching propaganda music in the background, like, <laughs> loud as fuck. <laughs> That's such a weird thing to forget did about. Did your parents but, ever call the cops? But, but, so my neighbors did, because they, like, they were, like, next door to him. Yeah. You know, there was, like, one family in between our houses. Mm-hmm. And uh, they would always call the cops on him. But, like, I think my parents, like, didn't want to call the cops because they didn't want to get in the middle of it because this dude was definitely like a wild card. We didn't know what was going on. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, good old Paul. <laughs> I wonder what he's up to now. Wait, why did you bring that up? Because like, he said baby dolls. Oh, because I said baby <laughs> yeah. doll. I remember he had baby dolls and it was really scary. He, he That's a like, great example of how quickly this podcast can take a turn. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Paul, one time he showed me his drawing of like a fighter jet that he did and it was like the most perfect drawing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> So shout out, Paul, if you're still out there and doing your thing. He's probably listening. No, I'm on your side. Yeah, don't hurt he's, me. He's probably listening to the podcast. So, oh, I hope he never finished that thing. Yeah. Um. No, but yeah, the baby shower is cool. It's it's cool to see. It's kind of, a, dude, it's kind of emotional. Like, you know, Anthony is one of Andy's best friends. And uh, I think, you know, Andy and Derek probably like two of Andy's friends that probably it was like the toughest on when, when everything happened. And like yeah. Andy would be so stoked to see Ant having a kid. Yeah. Like I feel like he would be almost as excited as he was about like, you know, Selena having a kid right. just cause Ant's like a brother to Andy. So, um, it's tough to like go to something like that and know like, Oh man, Andy would be so hype about this right now. Right, Everyone's right. at Derek's house celebrating that Anthony's having his first kid. Andy would probably be living there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, man, I, uh, I, I, it's funny. I wrote it. I got them a card and inside it, inside the card, I wrote something like, yo, aunt, you got this. Like it can't be that much harder than taking care of Andy. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, um, no, dude, it was cool. So, I, like, like I said, I saw a bunch of our friends I haven't seen in a minute. And yeah, dude, we went out to like I think it was last last year or early this year. We all went to a wedding of one of Andy's like really close friends, and it was such a fun. Yeah, we all had so time. much fun, dude. Yeah, it was, it's it was it's wild. so much fun uh, being with all of our friends in not a venue because yeah. I feel like the the cool part about the band is that Catastro has kept. In a lot of ways, I think Catastro kept our big friend group together over the years because people would constantly, like all of our friends, even from high school, would still come to our show every, yeah, you know, every couple times throughout, like every year after high school. And, uh, it's it's kind of unique to still have like a very big group of people that you still see once in a while. Yeah, it's, it's nice to have everyone come together. And like you said, like we're not busy doing other things because like that's most of the time that we've ever seen them is like that. And so now to still be able to like continue to, you know, yeah. hang out with his friends and um, all those people. One of our other moment. buddies, uh, Frank, you know, he showed up. He's got a kid now. <laughs> so awesome. it's just it's crazy seeing, uh, you know, our friends grow up. Uh, and then some of them just strictly not want to grow up. Yeah, they're and not that's what it, they're yeah. doing, too. And so. It's, uh, yeah, man, it was cool. And then uh, last week, uh, yeah, we had dinner with the Chavez family. Uh, and you weren't able to make it because you got sick or yeah. you, you ate some bad oysters again or what happened? No, I just you was had some sick. DE. I had like a little cold. It's a been a while. Cold. Yeah. Uh, there is something going around. I feel like I've heard about a bunch of people getting sick. I thought I was like, I thought I just had allergies because I, for three or four days, I was like, my allergies are killing me. And then that day I woke up and it like, I did, I worked out and then I, 
got really tired. I was like, I need to take a nap. And I took a nap for like, I passed out for like two and a half hours and woke up feeling awful. And yeah. That's why I was like, I, I hate doing that. But I like texted two hours before I was supposed to be there and canceled. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, it's I'm probably sorry. better if you're not, if you're feeling sick. Though. Or they have a baby and stuff. Yeah. I didn't want to spread it out. But. Yeah. Um, but it was cool. We got to show uh, Gonzo was over there with us, me, Gonzo, and Tanner. And uh, Gonzo sent them a link to the new music or, or like where we've gotten some of the stuff. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, it was really cool. They got to like hear some new stuff. That's I know. Some one new, of Andy's cousins posted it and posted like, oh, dude, it's already, names that are out. it's already <laughs> floating around. Oh, yeah, like, sure. uh, yeah, I don't want to give more we should stop talking about the album stuff no yeah for but sure. uh it's just funny because some of our friends already have the shit oh i know because you know the recent one we got yeah was not was sent to us through one of andy's homies oh yeah yeah so that one's already like in full circulation i think do they like but it? that's out of our control yeah everyone's lo- loves it like everyone came up to me uh yesterday and was like dude the bridge made me cry uh, you know what i'm talking yeah. about but like everyone's like super hyped on it but anyways, um, I feel like this week we've actually made a lot of good progress. We've been waiting on for this yeah. album, and you know we still have ways to go, and we're gonna continue to say that until yeah. we're yeah, allowed you know to what? not say that. But you know what? Um, I've been thinking about it too, bro. It's been it's been uh, really nice to not have a deadline, and and the fact that you know since we've got all the files on our hands. We've been able to, and we have our own studio. We've been able to work at on the album when it feels right for us to get together and work on the album. Yeah. And I know it's taking a long time. It's, it's, uh, but it feels good. Yeah, it does feel it good. Feels good. I do to, think like, that it's like starting, I think we're all on the same page where it's yeah, starting to feel like, yeah. all right, it's time to <laughs> finish this thing. But I mean, there's so much that's out of your hands when you're working on this project like we are. So, you know, we've, we're doing everything we can and I'm fucking Dude, stoked. Yeah, no, you're right, man. And, uh, it ha- that uh, something I've been thinking about a lot is letting go of that kind of trying to let go of that, of that control. Cause we're so used to having this direct outcome that we know we need when we need the album done by all these kinds of things. But now that, that he's gone and there's all these different variables that we're playing around with, like you said, there's so many things outside of our control that like have to happen at the right time when they happen. And when they do happen, we know like so far throughout this process, when the right things happen, we all collectively just, it's like a light bulb goes yeah. off. We're like, oh yeah, that's right. Cool. That's good. We're good. Yeah, it is hard though. Cause usually we can just be like, all right, let's make it so we have two weeks and then it's has to be done. And then we force ourselves to do it. But like now we can't like force other people to do things. So you just sit and wait. And then at times it feels like you're not doing anything, but really you're doing a ton of stuff and mm-hmm. i was like it was a thing that, like i went to in therapy i was like i feel like i'm just not doing shit and i feel like i'm falling behind even though there's nothing i really am falling behind in and it's just like this constant feeling of i'm so used to that what's next what's next what's next you know and like always working on something new and then it's just like everything stopped and slowed down and she's like just sit like try writing out you know all the things that you are doing in a day and even if it's like menial stuff but like you know wake up work out do this like your whole day and doing it and you like realize all these different things that you actually are working on you're like okay i'm not wasting all my time even though i might be wasting more of it than i should but um yeah it's hard to not just be like all right it's time for the next thing next thing next thing yeah you gotta just like let let this happen the way it's gonna happen yeah for sure yeah because i think I think that it's so hard to to step into the unknown. It's scary, dude. Yeah. It's like scary and it's like when you're used to having under everything under control or whatever we believe our like illusion of control is to a certain degree. When you like let go of that, it's like it's just so hard to constantly remember that and constantly let go cuz when you wake up in the morning you're like, "What do I got to do? I got to do this. I got to do this." It's like that right, list, yeah. that list of things that validate that you're being a useful person. You know what I mean? Right. And then you're like, you're trying to prepare for everything. Yeah. And then it's like, you can't. So as you end up just spinning your wheels on a bunch of shit that doesn't really matter. Yeah. And you're not really helping anything move faster, but in your head, it helps you comfortably like feel like you are doing something. And so that's how I, I've been dealing with that a lot. And I've definitely been getting better, but um, I think we can, I think we'll have some good news in about two weeks. 
I think I'm sure that yeah. from when this airs, I think yep. it'll be about two weeks and people are going to be, um, have a little bit more information on there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you think, uh, do you think that most of your anxiety in the past has, is there a possibility that it's been caused by that lack of like not wanting to just kind of let go? And the only reason I'm asking you that is because throughout the therapy that I've done, I have realized that even more recently, I've been realizing more parts of this about myself is that I get really bent out of shape and stressed out when I refuse to just let go. And I'm trying to like, uh, almost control things too much. Yeah. I feel like that causes me a lot of, um, stress and internal anxiety. And I get to this point where, like the other day I, I had, I don't know, just like this really nice breakthrough experience where I was kind of laying down and I just like kind of surrendered and was just like trying to let go and just be like, dude, I don't know what's going to happen in life. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Like, right. <laughs> <laughs> and like, that's okay. Well, and, I, but it's just, it was like this, uh, this moment of like, I think there's a part of me that, that wants to, prove that like I got it figured out like I'm good like I know how to do this I know that and uh it's like okay to accept like yo I don't know what's going to happen and there are forces way more powerful than me that are in play here and like that's like almost comforting I guess for me yeah, to have so like mine, faith and mine comes more from a place of trying to protect myself from like things I can't change so it is like partially a control thing but I'm not really I'm not, I don't control other people. I'm not trying to control their situations, but I'm trying to over control like my own. Yeah. Dude. And so it's like myself that everything goes on. And like, I realize that I don't, I give other people way more benefit of the doubt and slack than I ever cut myself. And so I'll be holding things in, in my head that if somebody else did, I wouldn't think twice about it, you know? But for me, I'm like, I, it, it's hard to explain I, I understand it, that yeah, completely because I do the same thing. Yeah, it's very much like I'm like, okay, what's the worst case scenario? Like, you know, I, we always joke about it because like my anxieties can like to me, they are funny sometimes. So <laughs> just like the weird shit. But it's also like it's this whole like anything can happen at any moment. And I don't like that. And I don't. And like this whole year has been like the biggest putting that shit in your face of like, yeah, see, the rug. your whole life can fucking the change. Rug, yeah, the rug getting pulled out. There's nothing you can do. And at first I was like a mess because I didn't know what to do because, you know, you everything's going one way and then it's not. You're suddenly, you're actually in reverse and you thought you were going forward the whole time. And, um, oh no, I've had a pretty rough last couple months too to add on to everything. So we'll see how everything goes. But so far I've been feeling pretty good that's what's interesting man like uh i feel like there's different phases and stages of life where like you start going uphill and you're like oh i'm figuring this out i'm getting the hang of all of how life works like there's yeah. moments where you start feeling like that and then some shit will happen again that completely rocks you and humbles you yeah and makes you give up not give up on life or anything maybe for some people I mean more so in a sense of like giving up on like having faith that things could get better and that you might not exactly know the plan of like why things are happening the way they're happen happening or why certain things in life are happening. You know, I think hopefully for, for me and you, once this album comes out, we're able to look back in retrospect and, and, and see these beautiful things happen and, and we go, you know what? Like it's, it was so hard losing Andy, but like, look at how beautiful this is. Look at, look at, look at what we did together in the wake of like the tragedy of losing our brother. You know what I mean? And so I think, you know, if you're able to see those doors open and be open to it and not, cause like if the part of me that wants to control everything is like full force in motion, I can't see those other things opening up and like, do, do you know what I mean? Like yeah, see yeah. these opportunities popping in. So yeah, I don't know, man. It's uh, it's crazy, dude. I'm just thinking so much about life and the way things work, and like questioning everything. And what is? Yeah, See, I'm trying to I'm trying to think less about life, <laughs> just go with the flow and 
that's a been hard is just going with the flow of things because I'm not not used to that, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's been it's been a interesting last couple of months, and we'll see. Yeah. It's it's really easy, and like I'm not somebody that ever like really feels sorry for myself. You know, I've been noticing that in the last year of like I start getting in those mental loops of like why is this happening to me or like because I I just felt like every worst case scenario is has been happening recently and I just keep getting like a bunch of blows and I'm just like all right well this shit's gotta stop eventually and then something even crazier where you're like all right you can't get much worse than this and then yeah something happens and you're like what the fuck so um but yeah it's like noticing my patterns of like the way that I usually will like cyclically think about things and get in my head and it's not helpful at all for myself and I'll just like it affects my sleep which affects my you know yeah mental health the next day that's the biggest thing for me but I just been yeah I don't know I'm just trying to do the things I know I like doing I'm trying to stay healthy I've been drinking a lot less and working out and going fishing a lot more and nice trying to like add more of the things that I know I like because those are things I can control and those are like healthy things to control. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, dude. So, so, uh, you went fishing the other day and who pulled up on you on a bike? Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I went fishing with another one of like Andy's friends. Uh, I was with Cole Libera. Cole, Cole yeah. <laughs> yeah. And who I was hanging out with yesterday and oh, baby there? shower. Yeah. 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 Did he say I was good or bad? Uh, I can't remember. I think he, no, he told Rohan, Rohan, <laughs> Rohan goes, dude, Cole went fishing with Ryan. He said Ryan knows a lot about fishing. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah, you no, I hit Rohan saying that? I hit him up. And so, yeah, we're at this like canal in the middle, like pretty far out in, in Chandler, like really kind of deep out there. And this guy rides his bike past me and he's like, I'm right behind you. And I was like, I, and I had seen him. I wasn't going to like cast into him. He's like, you know, I was hit by one of those one time. I was like, okay, sorry. <laughs> like, I don't know what to do. And then like an hour later, the same guy comes back. He's like, I'm, I'm coming back again. I was like, okay. I turned and I looked at him and he like looked at me at the same time. <laughs> and, our oh, eyes so- and so he's like ro- riding off into the distance and just keeps his head like turning towards me. It was like a movie. So he was yelling at you before you even knew he it was didn't even know. Yeah, That's- he didn't know it was me. And then he like stopped and he goes, Ryan? He, he- said he's been hooked before. Yeah, that's what he said. That's why yeah. he probably yelled. <laughs> yeah. And so he like, stopped it. So it was uh it was your like stepfather, your your mom's husband. My, so. my stepdad, bro. Yeah. Ke- so, shout out Ken Olson, man. Shout out Ken Olson. Hey, if you went to Corona del Sol or do happen to still go to Corona del Sol, you might know Ken Olson. He's a teacher there. Yeah, man. Yeah, he's like, Oh yeah, you know you heard I like broke my clavicle, right? And he just goes, <laughs> boom, and shows me his gnarly scar. He's like, I got out two days ago. And I was like, What the fuck? He's wild. He talks really loud too. Oh, he does. Yeah. He your talk- brother, I sent that picture to your brother and he's like, How was he on the volume? <laughs> Did like, he was, say that? That's yeah, awesome. that's funny. Um, uh, no, no, that's, yeah, that's so cool. I, I was hanging out with my mom and Ken yesterday. That's funny. I uh, went and, and hung out with them for about an hour or so uh, before I went to the baby shower yesterday. Yeah, he said he's going to go to the Luther school and uh, yeah. learn how to yeah, dude, make guitars. Yeah, dude, he'll build you and Tanner some guitars maybe. That'd be sick. Yeah, it'd be really cool. Wouldn't it be badass though if he like... I, yeah. I have a feeling he's going to become obsessed with this and deck his whole garage out into a guitar building yeah. sanctuary because he's dump he's, all of his retirement into yeah. building people guitars. I guarantee you, once he learns how to do He'll it, be he, good too. he's going to want to build you and Tanner something for sure. Um, so yeah, he's he's going to do that once he retires from teaching. Yeah, he said he's got like another year in him. I think. Yeah, I think does it's, he uh, teach at Corona? Uh, yeah, exercise physiology, and he also is the uh, coach of the the um varsity football team oh wow yeah because ken used to play in the nfl bro oh yeah he was, he was uh, a kicker, kicker for the 49ers and i think he played for the bills for a minute okay um yeah so i went uh i went hiking last week dude i started hiking more yeah and it's really nice where do you go um well i like to take murph on this trail at ps draw peak because you can take dogs there uh actually took him to Papago, 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 Papago Park the other day. Uh, but no, I, I hiked at uh, Camelback. I've been, especially now that it's getting cooler. Dude, it's been nice. In Dude, it's been so <laughs> nice. And <laughs> I remember like, I think on the last podcast I was telling you, I'm like craving the outdoors and wanting yeah. to get out. And uh, yeah, dude, I hiked Camelback. Uh, I, I believe it's the first time I've ever actually hiked to the top of Camelback. I think the last time I did it, I didn't make it to the top and I bitched out. Yeah, I did that when I was seven. So that's pretty cool. 
uh, to the top. Yeah, all the way yeah, to the top. Dude, yeah. it's a, it's not easy, bro. Dude, I I hiked the Grand Canyon when I was a kid, and I went and we stayed in this town out right next to the Grand Canyon, which I should know the name. I have no idea where it was, um, but we we were on like an Indian reservation, I think, and we ate food there, and I got food poisoning that night, and I was up throwing up all night. And then I had to hike the Grand Canyon like 20 miles the next day. Oh. And I did it because like, I was a kid. If I was me now, I would have dehydrated. Oh, yeah. yeah I know. It was just so Kids sick can just bounce that. back, bro. Dude, I remember it being like 115 and my mom would drop me off at the skate park and I'd be there for 12 hours. Yeah. And just like I would have like $3 to go to McDonald's. And like a, and like a my mom would give us a uh, cooler full of like soda. No water. Soda. Dang. Yeah. I would only... I would, no water. I would drink Dr. Pepper all day. Well, yeah, dude. You don't want to look <laughs> yeah. like a. You don't want to look like a bitch in front of your friends. You got to drink soda. I know. Not water. Yeah, you can't drink water in the summer. Water's for losers. <laughs> oh man. Uh. So, anyways, uh, hiked Camelback, dude. I would. I would like. Do you think you'd be? It'd be easy for you now. It's no. I don't think so, dude. It's not easy. Yeah. Like I was. So this is a cool story. I was three fourths of the way up, and. I have that thought in my head. I'm just like, yo, you've gone far enough. It, this is really hard. Like I was sweating my ass off. My legs hurt. And I'm like, you're good. You, you can turn around. So I'm about to turn around and head back down the mountain. And around the corner comes this dude with one leg and he's on crutches and he's jacked. He must have been like, a, he, I think it looks like he's like an ex-Marine. I, I just assume he like ex-military. Yeah. Uh, maybe he's not, but he was, you know, he's in good shape. He's also, he's also wearing a weighted vest and dude, he's, he's on crutches and yeah. he's, he's mobbing down the mountain. Like he's going fast. And I immediately throughout my whole body have this like moment where I feel like such a bitch. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, dude, I, I'm literally just in my head. Like I see this guy and all of a sudden I have tons of energy and I'm like, oh, you can go to the top. Yeah. And so, dude, it was like so transformative and and it like rocked me for a second, bro. How many miles is that? I want to say it's like a couple miles. A couple miles up and then a couple miles back? No, mile no. I want to say it's like a couple miles round trip. Oh, really? Maybe. I don't I don't know. We should look it up. Let's see. Cause we should try it. I don't I really actually, enjoy hiking, but I have been doing a lot more like walking outdoors, which is... is I, I just I haven't been to a bunch of like steep places, but just with the fishing ship, yeah, walking along rivers. I want to know how long this is. Let's see. Camelback Mountain. According to sources, it can take between one point five to three hours to reach the summit. It did not take me. It took me like an hour to go the whole the whole way. I think it's not saying how long it is. Well. We'll believe you. We'll take your word for it. <laughs> that sucks. I kind of want to know because it helps with the story. Anyways, I get to the top after I see that guy cruise pa- like coming down the mountain. I'm like, yo, you can go up there. So I get up to the top and I tell one of the dudes that's that's up there. And I was like, I was like, yo, I was about to give up. And then I saw that guy on the crutches and he's like, oh yeah, that guy does it twice every day. He goes up, down, up, down. That's crazy. And I was just like, oh my God, I feel like even more of a bitch now. <laughs> and so, so, uh, yeah, dude, it was just, it was crazy, bro. And, and then the whole, the whole way back down, I just could not stop thinking about how funny that quick perception, like adjustment, what like what happened for me? Because yeah. like the moment I saw him, I had more energy and I was like, oh, you can finish. So it's clearly, it's clearly a mental thing that I was giving up. Oh, 100%. And I didn't, like, my body wasn't actually tired. Like, not only did I go up to the top and then fin it, like, make it all the way back down was fine. I went to hot yoga that night, too. I did an hour hot yoga class. So, like, I had way more energy. I was just, like, mentally giving up and being weak and just, like, giving, giving into that, whatever, that voice, that, like that voice that says you can't do stuff that pops in. Yeah. I made the mistake on the first day that I was moving shit. I worked out and I did like a hard, like leg day. <laughs> and then I was like, all right, I'm going to give myself like 30 minutes. And then I didn't realize like how much shit I'd really like signed up to do, you know, yeah. over that weekend. 
and it was just kind of it was one of those situations where like i got halfway in i was like dude i'm fucking done but uh-huh. i couldn't yeah back out. and so like once you just kind of get over that it's there's so much mental stuff where i'm i do it with everything like not just difficult like exertion type stuff but just everything in my life where i'm just like it's like all right you've done enough that's good you, you can quit now, <laughs> you know? No, for sure. And then sure. once you like just stop thinking about things, like once I start thinking, oh, this sucks. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't like this. Then it's like, I'm fucked. So I'm just been trying to not get to that point. Or if I'm doing something where I'm really, un- I really don't want to be there. I'm not happy, whatever. I just kind of try to not acknowledge that I'm not enjoying myself and then just go with the moment. And it generally turns to be better I'm in a less shitty mood. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, I uh, beyond the physical aspect of that whole thing with that guy and seeing him, you know, it it just made me think about so many other things like like that guy's list of excuses that he has to actually pull from are are high. Oh yeah. So like there's there's so many more reasons for why you should not go to the top of Camelback Mountain and then down and then top and, b- and back down again if you have one leg because Dude, if I had first one of all, leg, he's I probably wouldn't stand pain. up anywhere. Yeah, for, for sure. First of all, he's probably in pain. Second of all, uh, it's dangerous. Like, like, dude, it's there are boulders that you have to climb up at, on Camelback. It's yeah. not easy, bro. It's I can't imagine that being easy with one leg. <laughs> yeah. Granted, he's got less weight, I, right? I, I, yeah, less that's weight. true. So, uh, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Um, but but you know, outside of the physical thing, it's like there are so many instances in life where you don't want to push past something that is mentally tough because of the fear and, and bringing up this entire list of things that can go wrong. Why this can't work, why that can't work instead of talking about what, what could work. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like, it's a game. It's like a game that we play in our heads. Whereas like, I guess at a certain point, if you just like, throw all that away and only focus on the things that like we were talking about earlier, the shit that you have control of. I don't know, dude, the whole thing, seeing that guy like rocked me for the rest of the day. I could not stop thinking yeah. about him. And do you think he me, likes that or do you think he feels bad where everybody this season, they're like, oh, if he can do it, I got to do it. No, <laughs> do you think I, I you think would be like, oh, that's like, that's motivating people and you like it, that dude, or do you think it was like, such a bad, I don't want to be a motivation. What a badass, dude. I just, yeah, that's pretty gnarly. It, it I could tell so you one cool. thing. If I had one leg, I wouldn't own crutches. I would just have a wheelchair. I wouldn't stand anywhere. Yeah. I would not be going to a mountain. I would be <laughs> like going to the movies or something. But yeah, dude, he, I don't know, man. It was just so crazy, bro. We, I think most of the time we give up mentally before the physical stuff even kicks in. Oh, that's and for I sure. Remember, I mean, dude, if you've ever done like a plank, like that's like the easiest example of like, you get to a point and you're like, all right, I need to quit. But like, really, you probably have like another 30, 45 seconds in you, but you just yeah. tell yourself like, it's like those little things where you're like, oh, this is uncomfortable. I don't want to do this. And then once you start thinking about it, you're like, all right, you are done. As yeah. soon as you start like believing yourself. Or even when it comes to like having a difficult conversation with somebody or like just things that you like dread until you actually do it. Like usually we're causing so much of the suffering in our heads in hypothetical yeah. scenarios before it actually even happens. I know like you've told me like in the past with your anxiety stuff, you would constantly just be thinking of insane like hypothetical scenarios that oh, are yeah. like causing you just like anguish. And like I do it too. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm not saying that's like no, yeah, it's even weird. Different. Like I think most I think most people are doing that. I think that's why there's so many people that are struggling with like depression and anxiety is because yeah, you're just <laughs> you're just playing this circus in your head of how bad things can get. And then it's robbing you from like how good the possible like present moment is. Yeah. There's a something with like I was doing do it to myself all the time. I'm not saying I don't do that either. I'm like admitting like I do that too. Oh yeah. But with uh, the therapy like for the because I was like my anxiety got so bad. It was like what was was at the peak at the peak of your anxiety. What I guess like what were you experiencing? If you you could like, like actually try to describe it, I guess. Like I couldn't leave my house at all. I couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't like, it's hard to describe, but it like for me, it was just such so physical and I would feel awful all the time where I would literally have, you know, like 
I don't know, like my like stabbing pains in my stomach that weren't that's all kind of in my head, but it, it really fucking hurt. And then I would have, you know, I'm constantly tired because I'm not sleeping well. And then I would have these headaches and like weird dizzy spells because probably I'm not sleeping well and doing stuff. And so I was just this constant, like I just felt like shit all the time and I couldn't get myself to do stuff. And it's like, I would go and try to like even think about certain things. And I felt like there was like this invisible wall there. I couldn't like, I couldn't leave my house. Like I, it was this thing where I was like, all right, I can't like I'm supposed to go here and I have to go like even things as small as one time I was supposed to go pick up my car from the shop and I left it there for seven days because I couldn't get myself to go down there and just grab a key and get back in my car. And it's just like, it was bad. And it, it was like really, really out of control. And was this after, uh, was this like after Andy or? So, I mean, that's happened before Andy, like a, a few years ago. But then, yeah, after Andy died, the it was peak like of it was after back. Andy though. Um, I mean, they're both pretty pretty high bad. it's just like i thought i was like getting better and i felt like it in most of my life it, it hits in like big waves so i'll get really bad like, like almost seasons yeah of like episodes or something yeah so like it's really bad and then i'm like okay it stops being as much of an issue and then it gets really bad again but obviously like when andy died it was his trigger and it just kind of like snapped me back to it and the pandemic was kind of bad for me too because it i wasn't really in a bad spot then but it, i gave myself so many opportunities to be like i'm i can't leave the house and then i would be like all my food is now delivered because it's like that's how it has to be and then i was like okay i'm literally i wasn't leaving my house for like weeks like going anywhere and everything was being delivered to me and i wasn't i was bailing on everything and i was you know it's just like and it was like okay but that's normal and that's good because that's what i was supposed to be doing and that's like literally what everybody had to do that's but in like my head it was like telling everyone well, to do, in yeah. my head i had like it was like real justification for it and like all these things that i've yeah but thinking like all right but um yeah no it, it got it for sure it got really fucking bad and just like super uncomfortable and it's hard to describe without people actually experiencing it because i remember before i had ever had it people would like be like oh i'm having anxiety they freak out and they fucking go away and you laugh at them and be like what the fuck's going on with this guy and then it started happening to me it's like oh you know you feel like you're dying like i'd wake up in the middle of the night gasping for air and not knowing what's going on and it's like it was became such a thing where it's like purely like this chemical thing in my head and my body that was happening whenever it decided to i wasn't like sitting there thinking about bad stuff and then i'd feel awful but you don't take like, you don't take medication right uh, no no I had really bad experiences when I was younger with medication and mm -hmm. I just, I won't do it. And so it's like, everybody's like, you know, you have to work out and exercise and it will fix everything. It's like, I was beyond that, but it definitely helps. You know what I mean? So it helps with like my sleep and it definitely help make things better. Like just working out and getting that energy out too. But it's not necessarily this like, cure all like some people believe it like anybody with whatever problem they have if they just exercise and they'll be fine it's like i need a lot more than that so you know doing that mixed with like some serious therapy and stuff has really helped but yeah i don't know it's uh when, when it was that bad it was just I, I really got to the point where i was like I, i'm realistically not going to live a long time if i feel like this all the time you know and I was like, this is not just because your I'm body so miserable. like it's not sustainable. I was just I was so miserable. And I was just like, I can't wake up every day feeling like, you know, everything like looks different. Everything feels different. You like wake up and you're just like, I don't like this doesn't feel like my house. Like, you know what I mean? And not fi not really where I'm not like, where am I? This isn't my house. But it's like this feeling where like something's off, you know, in like movies where yeah. they're in this like dream state and it's like that, but you're just like, everything's kind of fucking weird and wrong and everything people say, it's like kind of hits you a little different. And you're like, what is going on? Like something just feels weird. And then you start going. And one of the things was, you know, going through these things to try to get through the anxiety. And it was like, all right, so I get into these things. I'd start telling myself over and over again, like, you know, you say you have like a point that you want to make or whatever. And then to like look at that, with a bunch of other questions she had like this whole my therapist there's like a bunch of sheets of you know is this uh something you're saying to yourself like out of bias is this from like a biased source or is this from 
a trustworthy source. And it's always from myself in this situation, you know, because it's my anxiety, but it's like, it's not a trustworthy source. You know, I couldn't trust myself and my own feelings. So it's like, it is totally biased. So learning how to be like, okay, not everything that I think is right <laughs> or not, not right, but is true, you know, or even like real. And you're like, okay. And starting to learn how to, uh, kind of backtrack on it. Yeah. Cause it's hard to it. know if that's coming from like the lower, like ego part of yourself. That's like scared or in panic. Yeah. Because for me, like those thoughts arise too, for me sometimes where it's like feels can feel like super real. And then when you like look at it and take a step back, you're like, Oh, that's just, you know, you being like scared or like freaking yeah. out about something. Yeah. It's it, almost like two different sides of you, I guess, the way I would explain it, how it works for me. For sure, yeah. It's, I mean, like if you're telling yourself like you aren't able to do something or like um, whatever your situation is, you kind of like looking at it from a bunch of different point of views and you're like, all right, are you biased towards this? Like, do you think that this bad thing is going to happen or whatever, blah, blah, blah. You're not going to get whatever promotion or all these, like whatever you could have anxiety about. Do you think that's, is that coming from somebody telling you that is like, is your work telling you like that you're not going to get <laughs> your thing? Or is it, you know, somebody who has reason that like, you know, record of in the past, I'm always telling myself I'm not doing it. So it's like, okay, I can't trust that. It's not really like a reputable source myself. Do you think I'll like, yeah. <laughs> when I'm in that like uh loop, you know? Yeah. I feel like, I feel like personally over the last few years from, from my perspective, I feel like the most way that you have changed, uh, and this is just like my opinion, knowing you for so long as I feel like overall as a person, you seem to be more positive than you ever were in the past. Because I think in the younger years of the band, I feel like you always wavered heavily on the, like the pessimistic side of things. Yeah. Of like kind of just first talking about like what sucks and what could go wrong. Yeah. And like a lot of that stuff was funny too. So like we fueled That's it. That's what like, I do. <laughs> yeah. we, we like totally fueled that side of you to like, cause it was funny and like you would say really funny shit. Like we'd be on a tour that sucked and you would constantly talk about all the terrible things that are yeah. happening in a funny way. And it was funny um, but I do think at some point in life and like, I've done this too, where like you're constantly trying to be funny and talk about the shitty things. And then, but then it becomes this loop of like, all right, we're only talking about the bad shit and we're not like talking about solutions and how to move things forward. And then, um, but I feel like over the last few years, you kind of have had this whole different side of like positivity that's come out of you as far as like, I feel like, I don't know when this, I think it clicked a lot when I went to when I missed the first Katasha show and you kind of had to take over for like tour managing that that festival show that you guys played. Oh yeah, well our but tour like, manager quit too. <laughs> yeah, our tour manager quit, so a bunch of stuff happened and I remember from that point on you um I don't know, just became way more like uh and maybe it was even before that. I can't really remember, but I just, No, that was pretty much when it I, started, I feel like I that was when you became like uh more of like a positive solution based source of using like how smart you are to like figure out solutions for problems and like come up with creative ideas. And like, I don't know, at least that's, I've yeah, like noticed, I've that, noticed that big change in you over the past few years. There's still a time and place for me to like, just be like, Oh, this all sucks. And then just well, like, rip funny. on it because it's funny. Yeah, and then that totally. makes me feel better. But before it was like, and, that's all that's all my brain was though was I was only uh -huh. thinking about like that's I couldn't see any good thing in anything so I was just like yeah constantly everything was bad so like in my yeah. world you know and so I was just like that's I would just go off on everything and then now it's like it, after so much time of being in like a weird spot and like getting fine like I would go you know a year where I'm like I'm good like I feel great and then something happens and it just fucking hits me back down. I'm like out of nowhere. I'm just losing it again. I don't understand yeah, why. Cause you also don't want to be, everyone knows that person that's like overly, uh, delusionally positive. Yeah. And, and that's, you're like, who are you trying to trick? I it, think if that's it's like yourself, then that's fine. But if you're trying to convince all of us that everything's great with you, then and that's like that you. kind of delusional positive stuff can be dangerous too. Because if you're not willing to look at 
the reality of the situation and yeah. like what's actually happening, uh, that's that could be equally as dangerous. Yeah, and that's like that's a whole other, and that's a whole thing. That's that a whole people, other thing. Is just like you know not judging <laughs> your own thoughts. Oh my god. Oh, sorry. Let me take this. It's Gonzo. <laughs> is it? What a fucking idiot. Actually, <laughs> we are we are doing this on a different day than we normally do. So. Speakerphone. Yeah. Hey, what's so important, dude? We're live on the Camp Podcast. You said noon, damn it. You're live on the Camp Podcast. What's up, dude? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> yeah, go away, dude. Uh, do you have a good question to ask us live on the Camp Podcast? Is it an emergency? Uh, yeah, when am I going to be invited on the show? Never. Oh, turn down. Do you want to come in, dude? We'll put your name in the hat, dude. There's like <laughs> so many people wanting to get on. Yeah, dude. We have actual celebrities interested. But not on the calendar yet. I am a local celebrity, dude. What are you talking about? That's true. You are. Yeah, maybe at like the fucking Big Fish Pub. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stop. Go away. All right, I gotta go, dude. We're doing a podcast. You hung up on me. Good. Oh man. No, but yeah. Yeah, it's been a, it's been an interesting last couple of years of trying to change a lot and changing what. I want to, but also like recognizing like what is just me. Like, you know, I think before I would just be like, oh, that's just how I am. And that's what I do. And that's how things are. And that's not true, though. There's things we can change about ourselves. There's partially, I think there are some things where I'm like, yeah, maybe that's just who I am. And maybe I like, maybe I need to like realize that as long as it's not like a bad thing that negatively affects everybody else. And I'm like, maybe like my weird things I have a problem with with myself some of them are like, okay, that's just like my fucking thing. That's who I am. You know, people, yeah. everybody's different. Everybody has their own weird shit. And so, I don't know. Sometimes you're just like, all right, I'm going to change the things that I actually don't like and that aren't, you know, making my life better or, or useful or actively fucking up my life, you know, and change those or at least try to get like a little bit of handle on them. And then the other stuff, is it really that big of a deal, you know? Because when everything feels wrong, the smallest inconvenience is like the biggest fucking, like, you know, world ending thing. You're like, this too. Like, not this also. When everything else is on fire. It's and, like the and straw they, they that breaks me, the They give me back. the wrong order. And you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, and you're just like, are you kidding me? And, but it's like, once you kind of start fixing some of the other stuff and you start feeling like a little better, then all the little stuff doesn't bother you as much. And then it's like a much even, more even yeah, like, playing field that you're on. But I've been, I really have been doing a lot better over. I would say it's been like the last eight months have been pretty good for the most part. Um, I haven't like been nearly, I haven't been like canceling things because of anxiety or stuff like that. And I've been more busy and doing like a lot more things that I actually love. And I've been like way more active than I've ever been in my entire life as far as I'm actually seeing friends a lot and you know, with the fishing stuff and finding new hobbies and meeting new people. And that's all stuff where I would have, beforehand even if i wanted to do it i would have like convinced myself i couldn't go or something i shouldn't do it or for sure you know there's all this other stuff i should do and like I, yeah just because like i would give myself any excuse to get out of it something so um yeah dude it's uh ever since all that shit happened i think it's in a, in a lot of ways made me step back and reevaluate the different roles in my life uh you know as far as like not just being like a dude in a band or being someone that like records and produces music, but like, you know, the brother, friend, going to like a son, going to see my mom more because she lives here. It's like a few months ago, I realized like, dude, you don't see your mom nearly enough. And she lives in Arizona. Like your parents live in a different state. You have a, a a better, like more understandable reason to like (laughs) only see them or like go months without seeing them. So, uh, I think in a lot of ways though, uh, like evaluating those different roles in my life and then thinking about how I want to act out on, uh, fulfilling them in a, in a, in a better way relieves more pressure on me, the ego part of me that wants to get all of his validation and love and affirmation that like he's like worthy or important from just doing like music or like just a career you know what i mean like you're saying like you're starting to enjoy like going out fly fishing with friends and like catching up with friends you haven't seen in a while and 
because well, I, I, so I think for both might, of us for years, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but for both of us for years, kind of got all of our validation and self-worth from that one thing. So when that kind of gets like imploded in your face, you start like, it almost like consciously wakes you up to yeah. the other things that you have around you that are ve- equally as important things in life. It's like, dude, we could become super successful tomorrow, but like if all my family and friends die, like I'm not happy. Right. Like life's well, not going to be good. You know I, I was mean? thinking about that too. It's like uh, we could become super successful tomorrow, but like it's not going to fix my anxieties and stuff like that. That's where I was like, a year it, and if half anything, ago. it might like, make it worse. If anything happens good, I wouldn't be able to handle it because I'm in such a fucked up place right now, you know, as it is. And then it was like, all right, I need to get this better because otherwise nothing ca- can like, even if there is a good opportunity, I'm not going to be able to take yeah. it. I won't be able to do it or I'll convince myself not to, you know? Yeah. And then even, uh, even the more so recently, I've been trying to reshape my definition of actual words of like what I believe those to mean, like happiness or success. Like what is success? Like, what do you think success is? Honestly, like if you had to like unpack the definition of like your, your version of a successful life, what does that look like to you? I don't know. It's hard because but probably I'll, like to me, like my version of what my ideal success for myself would be is, you know, to just hit that higher level in the career that we've chosen and like music. And I don't know if that means like more notoriety or if that means more money or more opportunities or whatever. But that's what what I've been changing a lot too is my expectation. Uh, before it was like, if I don't do this in the next year, then I got to do something else and then I'm, I haven't done it. So then it's not going to happen. Me and Andy would always yeah, have those hypothetical that, yeah. conversations. Like, dude, if this doesn't happen next year, like I'm going to get a real job. Yeah. Like, that's what we talk about. All we the would time, like have yeah. these funny, it was like halfway joking, but kind of like, you go, you go, I'm going to be a detective. <laughs> 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 we'd be on tour. It'd be like the worst show ever. He's like, yeah, I'm going to go back to detective Andy's, school <laughs> for a while. Andy's fake. Uh, hypothetical if the band Phil's job was being x ray technician. Okay. No, <laughs> do, do, yeah. <laughs> do you remember that? Like, Picture oh that God, fucker dude. doing an x ray. So dude. funny. <laughs> Holy shit. But yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. That's been a huge thing is just being like, I'm not really on a timeline. I am getting older, but I'm still going to pursue what I want to pursue. And as long as I'm not affecting like my wife or her family or anything else. And I'm able to like get, keep my life okay and still do exactly what I want to do. And my dream then, yeah. Cause I, I know if I was ever try to like, you know, kind of give up and just do what, do something for like more instant comfort or whatever, like I would be so unhappy. I, I know that. So. Well, yeah. And I don't think, I think s- statistically and just based on what I've seen or we've seen so far with like what we've done in music and stuff, I don't think you should give up on that because I think, I think you're an insanely talented songwriter. And I think, um, even if it wasn't sitting in the room with me or, uh, the band, like you would have plenty of options to have a career within music writing and, and playing for different projects or different artists. And I think, um, I think, I think you have a real a real gift doing that and I don't know. I don't know if the guys in the band, I don't know if we've ever been good at telling you that before, but like a lot of people don't know that um you know, a lot of Catastro's music, a, a lot of the main parts have been started with you on the bass and you coming up with like really good chord progressions and you even helping Andy with like hooks and 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 lyrics here and there and stuff and yeah. like I've seen you grow a lot over the years in doing that stuff too and um I think, I don't know, the more you keep diving into that and we keep diving into like making music, like who knows what could happen. I think that's the exciting part of everything that's happened is that we don't really know where that's going to take us or like... Well, I like the risk too. I think I need to, I realize that like I need that like anything could happen. Like I like that. And you know, part of that fuels maybe the anxiety that goes bad, but some of that anxiety also goes towards like, that's what makes this shit exciting is because like you'd never fucking know. And that's what like... I would only ever get in those moments where I like not quit, but it's like, Oh, I need to go find uh, I go sell mortgages with my friends that are making hundreds of thousands of dollars. I yeah. could just, I could just go do that and I won't be like freaking out, but it's all out of fear. And it's like, I know all I 
I know what I'm actually good at and I know like where my strengths are and like what I bring to the table and like the music side of things. It's like, I couldn't see myself ever doing something else and then trying to fit that in for enjoyment. Cause I wouldn't, it would just ruin everything uh-huh. for me. So it's like, regardless yeah, of what I happens, see the way, it's like, the I like way the way, that way we do it. Yeah. Yeah. The way that, that you light up when shit starts catching a wave in the studio or like when yeah. you figure out something that's dope, it's the same feeling that I get when something cool, like something good. Ha- it's dude. It's such a cool feeling when you create something that wasn't there ten minutes ago. Yeah, and then and now like it's like there. accidentally do the it's right just thing. There yeah. now. When you're just hitting like <laughs> the, when you're hitting all wrong notes, and then you're like, yeah, oh, those ones actually sound cool. And then you're like, okay, that's a part. And then you're yeah. like, oh, that's actually the main part of this fucking song. And then yeah. you, you get it. And yeah, that's like to me that I've definitely like learned so much in songwriting just with working with our band and stuff. But then going and doing other stuff with you and the side production that we do together on all these other artists. And like, that's been really fun too. Cause it's just different. I'm like, all right, I'm not really in a box where I know I have to make like a catastrophe sounding song, like a chord yeah. progression or synth or baseline or whatever that is like going to become like our next track. And we can just go, Hey, we're working with this rapper. I'm like, let's just make a rap song and then we yeah. do it. And it's like, it's really fun to kind of let loose and, whatever happened like we were writing the other day with our friend colton avery an amazing songwriter and it was just one of those things where he wasn't like trying to m- come up with a new single for himself or anything it was just and and you know like i think we could have done a lot better i think we have done a lot better than like what we created that day but it's so nice to just be like we're all there and there's no real goal we're just trying to like fuck around and make something cool and like it's just fun like that's what i th- yeah that's what i love doing is making really weird and cool sounds that come together with people that I really fuck with, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, dude. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's exciting to think where could that take us? You know, uh, anything could happen. It's kind of exciting. Yeah, I know that, that. So like the episode on the podcast, like right the day that Andy passed away, we recorded that one and it was, uh, the day before, I, was it the day before or was it the morning of? I think, I think it was the morning of. Um, and I was like, I feel like something really good is going to happen. Next day, the worst fucking day of my life. Like worst thing that could ever happen to us happened. But I was starting to realize like I still think that that opportunity is there for something like really beautiful to come out of all this. So we just got to wait and see. And so we got to allow ourselves time to so get through it. But I think yeah. this is actually a really good spot to end this episode on. Yeah. But that was good. Yeah, we got deep. That was a good one. There you go. All right. And uh, then next. Thank you for coming to camp. Yeah. All right. We'll see you All guys right. soon. Uh, uh, bye. All right. Bye. <laughs>